This weekend, I checked out the newest card-based arcade game on the block, Gundam Arsenal Base. As a huge Gundam fan, I of course had to go out on the very first weekend and try it out. Here are my impressions of this new card arcade strategy hybrid game. First and foremost, it is a card game. And of course, it's the core thing needed to play it. Before the game's official release, Amazon was selling the starter deck for game players to use on day one. A player's team has to consist of 10 cards, 5 mobile suits, and 5 pilots. Each mobile suit has its own style and special attack, and each pilot has their own abilities. Mixing and matching these can be done, adding depth and strategy to the game. The general goal of the game is to get to the other side of the map and destroy the opponent's main base and sub-bases along the way. It's up to the player to send out units of their choice to deal with both the bases and enemy MS that appear. MS that are destroyed can return to play after some downtime. Each MS also comes with an associated cost. The cost meter is constantly filling up, but planning on who or what to use and when is important since units and abilities both use the same meter. By holding a character icon and dragging it to the map, you can choose to deploy that unit and choose its target. When a base is destroyed, it lets you or the opponent deploy further up the field. And when available, sliding a character icon up triggers their ability. By sliding it down, it triggers the mobile suit's ability and it triggers a special attack for whatever they are currently attacking. When the MS special attack animation is near its end, a timed gauge appears. If you press the big button on the machine at the right time, you get a hefty attack or defense bonus. Each unit has a different attacking style, which are color coordinated to make things easier to distinguish. Red means it's good against mobile suits, blue means it's good against bases, and green means it's better at long-range support and defending your base. Creating the right mix of units and pilot abilities was really important, because if not, the enemy can simply beeline it right for your base. It's a pretty interesting setup that made the game more complicated than I ever imagined it was going to be. In my first match, I simply chose whatever random cards came out of the machine without really thinking about what they do. It was a pretty big mistake on my part because I got completely wrecked. All of this is controlled by a touchscreen. I was pretty happy with how responsive it was and it never felt like I had to redo button presses when options were available. Though I did start panicking and wanting my abilities to come out ASAP so I just kept touching the buttons for no reason. It was definitely frantic but enjoyable. After the initial tutorial, I thought I had a pretty good understanding of the game and its mechanics, but still the overall strategy for winning will definitely take some time. Once I sit down and actually make my own team, I definitely feel like I could win. For game modes, there are a few options. There's ranked match, CPU match, player match, draw cards, and a tutorial. Each play costs 200 yen, which will let you play a selected game mode as well as rewarding a card. Additional cards can be drawn before or after a match for 100 yen each, up to a maximum of 5 before the game asks you to start the process all over again, preventing people from hogging machines, I assume. Ranked and CPU matches play out the same as a standard battle, with ranked obviously tracking player data and having you battle another human nearby or online. CPU battles can vary in difficulty, but in general, I'd say it's pretty aggressive, but not unbeatable. Like a lot of games in Japan, progress is tracked with an IC card. Your profile tracks data on matches, achievements, unlocks, profile customizations, and other bonuses like XP boosts, and more. It definitely reminded me of some of the mobile games in its login style of pop-ups and rewards before and after playing. Sometimes you'll even get an EX mission where harder challenges and fights will appear, granting better rewards for winning. I actually got this on my first match after tutorial match, and I got completely stomped by it. 
I was actually a bit surprised by the cost of the game. My assumption was that I could draw cards for 100 yen each and pay 200 yen separately to play the game. But actually 200 is the base price to begin a session of the game. Even if all you want to do is draw cards, you're better off being prepared to play a match so you get your money's worth. Because there are no boosters and the base starter deck is the only thing available, all further cards come from the machines themselves at 100 yen each. These have varying levels of rarity and usefulness in the game like any card game. In my time drawing cards, I only got one master rare, a Kshatriya, which is pretty neat because I actually love this mobile suit and the pilot, though I didn't find her card. Another neat feature of the game is that it knows when a rare card is being dropped and has a special animation and lights adding to the fun. I also want to mention the surprisingly high quality of the cards themselves. They're a nice size and feature some absolutely awesome, unique Gundam art by various artists. Not to mention they have great holofoil effects too that we all know and love in card games. I'll definitely be grabbing some sleeves for these babies before my next visit. Overall, my initial impressions of this game are quite positive. As someone who loves Gundam and strategy games, and regularly has to stop himself from card collecting again, this blend of all three has a lot of initial appeal for me. After my first taste this weekend, I'm itching to get out there and try out some different teams and setups that I make. Still though, the price of the game and ones like it are a bit of a deterrent for me. I'd love to sit down and drop 2 or 5,000 yen on this game, but at 600 yen a pop for one match and 5 cards maximum, and these cards are randomized, it's just a bit too rich for my blood to make this my new arcade jam every weekend. I'll definitely check out this game again in the future, but I'm not sure how much I'll end up playing it because of how much it costs. I know games of this nature are very expensive and it just kind of comes with the territory and you have to build up your cards and get lucky over time. Still, this is only announced as Season 1 and they've already got some of my favorite series like Iron-Blooded Orphans and the original. And if they add something like Thunderbolt or even some of my favorite mobile suits like the Jesta, I'll definitely be checking out this game again in the future. Anyway. That's all for this Arcade Impressions, I hope to see you again, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video on the rest of this game or maybe the next seasons. Anyway, I hope you follow, I hope you subscribe, and I hope, even more, to see you again next time.